vulnerability is usually seen as weak across all parties. And so in order to function in our society, we need to bury our emotions. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni, and today I wanted to talk about five reasons why you should stop running away from your emotions. So society plays a massive role in why we run away from our emotions and part of the reason is that we've been socialized to do that. So for men, we've all heard about toxic masculinity. A lot of men get made fun of, especially as young children, for crying or for feeling sad and they feel like they don't really have an outlet. If they do express their emotions, they get made fun of, so they have to bottle it up. And then for women, for other people to call us too emotional or to call us crazy whenever we express our concerns or our emotions. So for both men and women, um, we're just socialized in general to not allow ourselves to express how we feel and to not really allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Vulnerability is usually seen as weak across all parties and so in order to function in our society we need to bury our emotions. So it's not your fault if you find yourself running away from emotions or find yourself, you know, feeling like you just can't really confront them head on or not even knowing how to. Um, because as children, if we're taught to just bury them away, we don't really have any healthy tools for managing them or digging into them or dealing with them at all. So when we think about fear, the only way that you can move past a fear or get over it is if you confront it. And emotions are no different. The first thing that I want you to realize is that emotions aren't bad, right? Humans have emotions for a reason. Even dogs and other animals have emotions. We know when our dog is happy or we know when it's sad. First of all, emotions aren't just for humans, but also emotions in general are just reactions to things that are happening around you. You can never fully turn off your emotions. What you can do is numb yourself. And when you're numb to things, you can't just numb the bad. You're also numbing the good. So after a while of numbing yourself and pushing away the bad and pushing away hurt and pain, you also can't experience joy and fulfillment and just happiness in general. The second thing is that emotions don't last forever, right? And every emotion that we have is teaching us something. So you'll never get past that emotion unless you feel it. And I have an entire video on this called You Won't Heal Until You Feel, so I will link that as well. I would highly recommend watching that because I kind of expand on this topic a little bit more. But emotions are meant to be felt. And if you recognize something as sadness or anger or pain and you just push it away immediately, it's not just going to disappear. It's going to come out in different ways. Number three is that emotions, like I'm saying, never really go away, right? Emotions and trauma especially are stored in our bodies. Your body holds emotion and it's not all just in your head or in your heart. So these things actually affect us and you may have heard that it is possible to experience physical pain from a broken heart. So just because you don't choose to acknowledge an emotion in the time being doesn't mean it's just going to go away and you're never going to feel that again. It's going to come out in different ways but you just have less control of it, over it and the emotion won't disappear. You're going to revisit that emotion whether it is in anger, it's inflicting pain on others and turning your hurt and trauma and abuse into trauma towards another person. You could um, hurt hurt yourself through addiction or self-harm, or you can self-sabotage. You can sabotage great career opportunities. You can sabotage relationships by telling yourself that you don't deserve a good relationship. There's so many different ways in your life where you might not be able to immediately recognize it, but you're actually holding yourself back and sabotaging yourself from your greatness because of all these stored up emotions that you haven't dealt with. So on that note, the fourth thing is that you can actually find out patterns and you can break these patterns by dealing with your emotions. You need to start to pay attention to your emotions and see what's coming up for you. And when you do that, you can start to take note of something that is related to something that happened a long time ago and instead of being able to let that go and move forward you're bringing up similar things or seeing these patterns in other places in your life so once you understand how things make you feel and you're not afraid of just saying it or acknowledging that that will help you understand what 
the patterns are in your life. And understanding those patterns will help you realize more about yourself and what you need to stay away from and what you need to do to live a fuller, healthier life. There is something called the emotional behavioral pattern and what that is is when something affects you in your life enough to create basically a pathway in your brain. So you are reacting to something that happened a certain way and you just recreate that pattern or that behavior over and over again due to an emotional reaction that you had. And the only way that you can actually break free of that is through inner work and is through awareness of what that event was, how it created that reaction, and then how that creates a pattern of behavior in your life. And the fifth thing is that when you do start to acknowledge your emotions and when you do start to recognize these patterns and if something happens that just kind of took you off guard and you don't know why you're reacting in that way, it's still telling you something important about yourself. So that is valuable information that you can use to move forward, whether it's something that you need to work on and, and work towards or it's something that you need to work on letting go of. Self-forgiveness is a huge part of this, and what self-forgiveness actually does is it allows you to be okay with the mistakes that you've made in the past and be okay with maybe mistakes that you might be making in the present. What you need to do is figure out you know, what your next step is and how you can work towards leading a better life, but if you are in denial of your current problems or things that you've made in the past, you're just going to keep repeating those and living those out over and over again, and you're not going to be able to actually break free of those things that are holding you back. So make sure that you forgive yourself. Make sure that you give yourself some space to try and figure things out. And just because you're dealing with your emotions, it doesn't make you perfect or fixed or not broken anymore. But it does give you the opportunity to take a little bit more control and kind of take the reins over your life so that you can live a more purposeful life. Because no matter how fast you run, you're never going to be able to run away from your emotions. Your emotions are always going to be a part of you. So no matter how many times you try and start over or how many times you try and, you know, completely change your life around or forget what's in the past, it won't go away until you just acknowledge it. And it's a really difficult thing to do, but once you start doing it and once you practice that, it becomes easier and easier. It's like a muscle that you can build for yourself and it allows you to be more free and make the decisions that you want to make without feeling feeling like you have all this baggage or all these things holding you back. I mean, there's a lot of things that therapy can really help with, especially when it comes to letting go of trauma, figuring out if there is something deeper with your mental health. Definitely try therapy with a lot of these things. If you don't already know, I spent years and years in therapy, and it really did help me. It helped me unpack a lot of things and let go of a lot of things, so I highly recommend that. And if you feel like you have kind of a, a sense of that and you're not letting go of some really heavy trauma or you're not looking for um, maybe a diagnosis that you might have or things like that, then life coaching is also a great option. So if you don't already know, I am a life coach and I will leave my uh, details in the description as well on how you can sign up for life coaching. My first session is always free just to get to know me and to figure out, you know, what you want to work on. So if you are interested, I will leave all that information down in the description below. Don't be afraid to uh, reach out. You know, these tools and these resources exist for a reason. So take advantage of them. So I really hope that this video helped you. If you learned anything, please let me know in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like and subscribe so that you can get more content like this. Thank you again for watching. I love you all so much. Happy healing.